hello everyone welcome to another video tutorial on the code angle youtube channel in today's video i'm going to create a crud application by making use of angular and google sheets that is the front end of our application is going to be created using angular while the back end is going to be created by making use of google sheets as you can see on the google sheets page we have four headings which takes the fields of name platform technology and link so and you can see on the page which was created using angular we have four fields that represent each of those headings so what i'm going to do is to quickly show you a sample of how this works so for the name probably i'm going to enter a content creator on web development from youtube so let's go with um, brad traversy and then the platform is youtube and then technology creates web dev content and then the link to his channel i can just um, paste that right there so when i click on submit the data gets saved to uh google sheets as you can see right here as you can see you have brad traversy youtube on that technology you have web dev and the link to his youtube channel so uh google sheets serves as our back end so we can also perform crud functionalities doing this that is if i click on edit um instead of probably brad traversy i can just change it to probably traversy media so let me say traversy media and then once i click on submit then the data gets updated both um on the google sheets and on the front end of our application which you can see here and i can also go one step further by deleting this particular entry so once i click on delete you see it gets deleted here as well as on the google sheets uh, database so that's what we're going to be creating today so if you are new to this channel make sure you like as well as subscribe to allow the youtube algorithm to recommend my channel to other developers out there and with that we can get started with how to put together this particular project so to get started with this project what we need to do is to create a new angular application and to run that command what i've done here is to open my projects in my directory using my terminal so i can just type in ng new command and then type in the name of my project which i'm going to call ng ng sheet and then i press enter so a couple of prompts comes up and i'm asked if i want routing yes routing will be used in this project and i'll be making use of css as well so while this is loading what i can do is to quickly set up my google sheets accounts or projects um to do that i'm going to head straight to google.com forward slash sheets forward slash about you can go to that particular url and then i can now log in into my google sheets account so i can now click on the google sheets button over there and then i get navigated to my google sheets um, dashboard where i can create a new a blank project so you can do that as well so i'm going to click on the blank button and then as you can see a new spreadsheet is created for us so i'm going to title this particular spreadsheet and call it programming and press enter so that particular name is now configured next thing i'm going to do is to click on share and by default uh, google sheets is set to private so we need to make the access public because right now is restricted so i'm going to click on the drop down and then click on anyone with the link this will allow us to be able to interact with the google sheets to create the code application so i'm going to click on done and then the next step we need to do is to create the headings as you can see when i did the introductory video so we're going to have four headings in fact so the first one is going to be called the name and then we're going to have the platform and then we're going to have the technology and then the link to the particular um, resource of the particular entry we are entering so with that set up we can now um, proceed to the next step so actually for us to create this crowd functionality we are going to be making use of a platform called sheet.best so i'm going to head straight to sheet.best as you can see 
this is a particular platform that allows us to connect to google sheets excel sheets and google drive and the likes so once you get to this sheet.best website you can click on start free button and then with that you are asked to choose a particular account so you can use your google account to register so i'm just going to do that so once that is done i get navigated to a welcome page where i'm asked to create a connection to get started so i'm going to click on the plus connection button and then i'm asked to give my connection a name so i'm just going to give this name programming i'm going to select google sheets we are provided with two other options which are google drive and file upload and then we're asked to provide a connection url so the connection url is what we can get from our share button on google docs so i'm going to click on copy link right here and that's all we need to do then we head back to our sheet.best dashboard and then paste in the link and then click on connect that will configure our connection for us and then we are provided with an api consumption of 100 requests per month so as you can see we've used just 0.00% um, so far so to implement this i'm going to click on the details button so this would now provide us with a connection url which we will use inside our angular application but for now since our angular application is still being created we're going to do that later what i'm going to do next is to check if the generation of our project is completed so i'm going to open my terminal and you can see it's completed so i'm going to cd into that particular directory which i call ng dash sheets and then okay what did i call it sheets no s at the end and then i can just clear everything here and then open the project in visual studio code by pressing code and dots and enter so now our project directory is open inside of visual studio code which is awesome so the next step we're going to take now is to create all our angular components so to create the components i'm going to head straight to our terminal once more and then i'm going to run ng generate components the first component i'm going to create is called the create dash data and then we're going to create another component so i'm going to type in ng generate components i'm going to call that edit data and then finally i'm going to create one more component which is called list data as you can see all three components have been generated for us so let's confirm that inside of visual studio code so right in the src directory and in the app directory i'm going to expand them and you can see we have three components the creates data edit data and list data so quickly i'm going to head straight to the app.components.html file the boilerplate templates is always here by default anytime you create a new angular project so what i'm going to quickly do is to clear that off and the only thing i'm going to leave here is a tag called router-outlet that enables our routing to work properly so i have to clear the rest of the boilerplate code so with the router outlets it allows us to route from one page to another so that needs to be left alone and also in the index.html for this project we'll be making use of bootstrap 5 so i need to bring in the bootstrap 5 cdn link so i'm going to create a new tab and then type in bootstrap 5 i'm gonna head straight to the bootstrap 5 documentation inside of there i can get the link for both the css as well as the javascript so i'm gonna copy them both and then right in the edge section i can paste in the cdm for the link tag and then for the script i can put that in the body tag so i'm just gonna put that right here and then i'm gonna save and that's all we need to do in our index.html page so moving on we need to design each of these pages that is the create data the edit data as well as the list data so to do that what i'm going to do is to start with the create data page 
and i'm gonna clear what we have right there s straight to bootstrap 5 because the create data has a form so we need to make use of bootstrap 5 forms but in the meantime we can also set up a navbar so i'm gonna i'm gonna search for navbar in bootstrap 5 right here and then we can just scroll down and select the simplest of navbar we can find i think i'm gonna go with this particular navbar right here so i'm gonna copy that and then i'm gonna paste it right above and inside of the navbar i can just have a home text right there and we'll configure the link later but for now we can just leave it as as it is what we need next is a form so quickly i'm gonna type out form from the bootstrap 5 documentation and we can look for a form that suits our need i think this particular one is it's it's fine so what i'm going to do is just to copy everything right here so i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to paste it but before i paste it i need everything to be inside of a div tag so i'm going to paste it right inside of a div tag and within the div tag it's going to have its own class so the first class is going to be called container Oh boy, it's outside of the quotes. This happens a lot to me anytime I create Angular projects. So I'm gonna have container and then I'm gonna give it a margin top of five. And right now, I guess we might need to see what we are doing, but before we do that, I can just quickly edit some of the inputs we have here. As you can see, we have four fields in our introduction. So the first one is called the name. So I'm just gonna edit this label and put name there and then instead of email address i'm just gonna have a name and the input is gonna be input type of text and we don't need this particular div i'm just gonna get rid of that we don't need this area described by i'm gonna remove that as well so with that we can duplicate what we have and then do the do the same thing for the remaining three fields so we've done the one for name we can just do for platform technology and link so the next one is platform so i'm just going to type platform and then it's also an input type of text and the id we can put that as platform so same thing for the technology and then the labels and the id can be technology And finally, we can have the link. So, this will be link. So, I'm just going to save and we can now try to see how this looks on the page. To do that, I can just um, grab the app create data selector edge straight to the app component.html file and probably right above the router outlet. I can paste it in and then save and then i can run the command ng serve and see what the front page looks like so we'll still configure our routing after the design but for now i just want us to see how our create data components looks like so on the browser i can just go to localhost for the 200 and then we should be able to see our create data page and you can see the form looks nice and then we have our navbar as well which has the text of home so next thing we can just quickly do the design for our edit data component which is going to be the same so all i go have to do is to copy the create data component and then add to the edit data component.html and then paste it right in the only thing that will be different here will be instead of submit button we're gonna have updates and then probably instead of btn primary we can just give it btn success so the button is going to be green and to see how that looks like you can also grab the selector and then put it inside of the app component.html file so i'm going to cancel this and then i'll replace it with that and then paste it in and then save then we are straight to the front page and as you can see the button is green which means we can now see our edit data component because we gave it a btn of success now the last page we need to design will be the list data components and to this data we're going to make use of a table so quickly i'm just going to 
go to the edit data component and then probably grab the nav bar that's the only thing we need here and then head straight to the list data components paste in the nav bar and it's gonna have a name or a text of add to sheets and then we need a table so to create a table first thing we need to do is to create a div with a class of container just like we did previously and then spell container properly and then we have another class called margin top of five to give it some space at the at the top and then quickly we head to straight to the bootstrap 5 documentation probably the last time we'll do that today and then we type in table so i click on the table and then we are presented with an array of tables so i'm gonna go with this table where we have right here i want our table to look this way but what i can do is um i can grab the other tables above and just make the necessary changes so what do i mean i'm just gonna grab this table paste it in and then i'm gonna add a class that gives our table a dark color so when i scroll down as you can see it has a class of table table dash dark table striped so i'm gonna copy that particular class and then paste it right here so that gives it a dark effect so we can now edit the headers so the first header is going to be called name and next one is going to be platform and then we have the technology as well as the link now for the edit and delete button the headings is going to have their own space but the text for the headings will be empty because um they are going to be represented with a button a delete and an edit button so once that is done we can now scroll down and for now since the data is not ready i can just get rid of um, probably these two table rows and then um right under the td we have right here we need to create a button for the edit and delete button so to do that i'm just going to cr create an html tag called button and within the button tag i can just type in the edit and this button should also have its own class so i'm going to give it a btn btn secondary so i'm going to duplicate this and then this will be btn btn danger because that will be our delete button and then i think i can save and grab the selector to see how the page looks so far so we head straight to the app component html file and then we paste in the selector and then we save head straight to the browser and as you can see we have a table list looking this way these are dummy data so for now it's just um so these are static data so for now we can't really do much but as we proceed with the tutorial our crowd functionality would come into play and we'll see how dynamic this can be so with that we can now move straight to the next step which will be setting up our services so to set up the angular service once again i'm in my terminal and i need to stop the server so to set up the service i'm just going to run the command ng generate services which stands for s i'm going to make this in a service directory so i'm just going to type in sheets that is it's going to be inside of the services directory heading back to visual studio code as you can see inside of our services directory we now have a service file called sheets.service.ts so the next thing is to head straight to our app module.ts file so inside of this file we need to import a particular module called http client module so quickly i'm just going to type in http client module and i need to import this from at angular slash common slash http so right above and then below the browser module you can do that right there so i'm going to type in import and then this is going to be from the at angular slash common slash http and with that our service is now configured in the app module.ts file so i'm going to save that and then head straight to our sheets.service.ts file we need to create a model and this model is going to have its own folder so right in the app 
directory i'm going to create a new folder called models and inside of the models folder i'm going to create a new file called sheets.model.ts i'm going to press enter and we need to configure this sheet.model.ts file so we need to create an interface which we're going to export so i'm just going to type in export interface and then the name of our interface is going to be called sheets this is going to represent the way the data we are trying to set up is going to be so for instance we have a name which is going to be a type of string we have a platform which is also going to be a type of string and then technology and finally a link all having a type of string so we'll need to import this in our sheets service file but before we proceed we need to also inject something inside of our constructor something called http client made available because we injected the http client module in our app component in our app module.cs file sorry so quickly i'm going to type in the private keyword because this variable is only available in this particular file so private http and then we type in the http client which is also coming from the angular common for slash http so next up we need to configure our environment variables as well because we need the connection string from our sheets.best dashboard so quickly i head straight to the environment.cs file because um the app is not yet in production so it's gonna be over here so inside of this particular file i'm gonna create a variable called connection underscore url and then i'm gonna quickly head straight to the sheet.best dashboard and then we need the connection string this particular string i'm gonna copy it and then i'm gonna paste it inside of a string and with that we can now save wherever is in the environment TS file and then head back to our sheet service file and with this we can now start creating each of our service we're going to create because it's a crowd application we're going to create at least five different services because we need to undo the create list delete and update and we'll be updating by id as well so that's going to be like um five different um particular service so we start with the first one which is going to be called create sheet that is this is going to be a functionality that helps us to create the sheet by using the sheet.best api so inside the create sheets we're going to have the four fields configured so that is the name which is type of string the platform technology and finally the link and this is going to be a type of observable so i'm going to type in observable which we need to import from rxjs in fact so i'm just going to use the intelligence to import that in we're going to call in our model so to import our model i'm going to make use of intelligence as well so we have been able to do that and now we need to return something so what we're going to return is because this is a post request because we are creating so i'm just going to type in this dot http dot post and then we bring in the model as well here which is type of sheet we're gonna make use of template strings over here so we need the connection url we created in our environment variable so i'm going to type in environment which you also need to import so environment dot connection string uh, connection url url rather and then the second argument is just going to be the list of um, fields we intend to create which includes the name platform the technology as well as the link so i'm just gonna save i didn't spread the crates properly so i'm just gonna save and with that we've been able to create our first service which enables us to create a sheet which can be seen in the google sheets platform so before we proceed i just want to head straight to google to the sheet.best once more and then i want to show you the link to the documentation so in the documentation you can see that it's easy to read and understand you have the documentation now to get post delete and patch or put that is updates a particular data so if you're interested you can dig more into the documentation to create more awesome functionalities as you can see if i click on the get you have code samples on shell python as well as javascript so 
they are pretty easy to understand and um like i said you can come here and implement more or some things in your application but for me i just um, decided to create a crud application using the ship.best um, platform so we can now proceed to the next um, service which is to list the sheets we've created so i'm gonna name this list sheets and then this doesn't have any parameter above so we just need to return by making use of the get request so i'm just gonna say this dot http dot get because we are trying to get the sheet and then we make use of the back tick once more and then using the dollar sign we can just pass in the environment.connection url and that's all we need to do to list a particular sheet that's our second service the next service we need to do create is the delete so quickly i'm just going to pass create the delete sheet and this is going to have a parameter of um, id which is a type of number and not string so because we are trying to delete a particular um entry in the form so we need to get their id and then for that to work properly so you we don't delete something we are not supposed to delete so it's going to be this dot http dot delete because it's a delete request and then we pass in the connection string as you can see and then we can now do for slash because we need to get passing the value of the id so i'm just going to pass in the id and then all i need to do is to save so as you can see the delete functionality should work by making use of that particular service called delete sheets and then one more sheet we need to create is called the get sheets by id so probably want to get a particular sheet so this will come in relevance over the course of this tutorial so let's just keep um implementing this so get sheets probably data by id this is going to also take a id of number similar to the delete sheets um service so i'm just going to return which is going to be a get request so this dot http dot get connection underscore url so we need to also pass in the id so i'm just going to say for slash make use of the dollar sign and then pass in the id and without we are able to get the sheets by its id and finally to update the sheets i'm gonna create the update sheets service and it's gonna have the what's it called the four parameters the create sheets as so i'm just gonna copy that and then right below i'm just gonna paste it right here and then open the brackets it's also going to have a model of observable of type sheet so i'm gonna pass that in right here and then we're also going to return similar to what we did with the create sheet so i'm just gonna grab everything right here and then paste it within the brackets and i'm gonna change the post to put because that's the request the api needs to update and then we pass in the second argument which contains all the fields we want to update so with this all our services have been created and we just need to integrate them into our components but before we do that we need to set up the routing for the components so to configure the routing we need to head straight to app-routing dot module dot ts file just we have it right here so the routes will be configured inside of the routes array as you can see here and each route in angular is going to be inside routes inside an object so as you can see we create a bracket and the first route we're going to create is for the create data component so this is going to have a part called create data and then we need to import the we need to import the component which will be create data component and then we bring it in as you can see above we have the create data component and we can replicate this for the list data component so quickly i can just duplicate this and instead of create i can just have list data and instead of create data components i can just have list data components and then import that as well so that's the second component getting configured and then the last components we need to configure is going to have a it's going to be slightly different so let me just bring that down and it's going to be called edit dash data but it's going to have a four slash id because it's going to have a route parameter and the edit needs to 
have an id specific to the particular components we want to edit so that's why we are generating the for slash id for the route parameter and then we can now bring in the edit data component and then import it into a routing file and finally the default part of the application we need to create that as well so it's also inside of the objects i just set the parts and then it's going to be empty um string and then we want to redirect to is going to be the for slash create data component create dash data component and then the parts match because sometimes if we don't set the parts match the url for the default would not match any component so we need to set that to full so we can now save and with that our app routing file is now configured and then we can now implement the final part of the tutorial which is going to be how we want to integrate each of the services we created inside of this project so quickly let me start with the create data component so quickly i head straight to the create data component.cs file this is where we need to consume the service needed to create a new sheet that would reflect in our google sheets dashboard to start off i need to bring in some things first thing i need to bring in is the service as well as the form builders and the form group and also i'll need to bring in the router because once the form is successfully created i will need to route to a particular section of the page so before we get started i want to also check something in my app components.html file i need to remove this app list data because now our routing is now configured we don't need to make use of the selector to see certain pages back to the create data component cs file so let's import what we need so the first one i'm going to import is going to be a private variable called form builder and then call the form builder we need to import it from angular forms next up we need to import our service so i'm going to say private service and then name of our service file is called sheets if i'm not wrong sheet service actually yeah sheet service then finally we need to bring in our router so private router then router so i'm gonna save all that so before we configure our form i also need to create a particular variable that represents the form group so i'm gonna call that google sheet form and then it's gonna be a type of form group which you also need to import i'm gonna copy this and then within the form builder objects i'm gonna paste that in and then we have this initializer error so we just need to put in an exclamation mark to get rid of that so within the constructor this is where we now set up our google sheet form using the form builder so what i'm going to do is to make use of the google sheet form variable we created above by saying this dot google sheet form which is going to be equals to this dot form builder and it's going to come in form of an object so within this object we need to put in each of our fields that is the name platform technology and link so to do that i'm going to start with the name so the name is going to take in a form builder which is going to be dot control and by default it's going to be empty so this applies to the next three fields so i'm gonna duplicate that and then all i need to change is the names so so change the name to platform and then change this to technology and finally change this to link and with that we have our forms properly configured now we need to now extract to our create component create data components html file because we need to make use of a form control name so each of the input fields needs to have their own form control name so quickly to do that i'm just going to type in form control name so the form control name for the name is going to be called name so i'm just going to copy this and then do the same for the platform input field so this is going to be called platform same for the technology pasting the form control name type in technology and finally the link 
so we have this as link so with that we can now try to log the data within our form inside of the console to show that this can submit and to do that we need to also configure the form tag over here so the form tag is going to take in the form group we'll type in the form group and then the form group is going to carry the name of our form which is called google sheet form so i paste it right in and then we need to create a submit event handler which is going to be ng submit and then we're going to give this form a name so i'm going to say sub on submit i'm going to give it a parenthesis and with that we can now try to log or wherever we have in the console as, and as you can see the form is showing an error which i'll explain the reason in a moment but quickly let me just create this on submit form we have right here in our ts file and then probably we can just console log the values of the sheets of, the, of our form rather so i can just say this dot google sheets form dot value but for this to work we need to import a reactive form module because as you can see in the html this is freaking out because we haven't imported the reactive form module and this can be done in our app comp app dot module dot cs file so right within the import array i can just type in reactive forms module and then try to import it from at angular forms so right above i can just put it right here import reactive oh no reactive forms modules from at angular slash forms and as you can see all the errors get disappeared and i can just close this app.module.cs file and then head back to uh, create data components and save everything we've done so far and the button type i don't think we need to put a type of submit doesn't need to be that way so i can just save now and see if we have started our server which we haven't so i'm gonna run the ng-serve command and then once that compiles we can then check our console so right on the page the page reloads and then as you can see the default route takes us to the create data page and then i can just open up the console and head to the console tab clear everything right inside of there and then just enter some random characters and see if when we click on submit anything gets locked to the console as you can see we have the name, the link, the platform, technology, everything we can now get by pressing the submit button. So we can now send this data to our um, Google Sheets and read it directly from here, which serves as our database. So to implement that, we need to connect to the API. And to do that, we can create variables to extract each of the values inside of the form. What do I mean by this? We need to get the values for the name. And to do that, I can just say const name is equals to this dot google sheets dot form dot value dot name and then i can just do the same for the remaining three fields which are the platform then we have the technology and finally the link so now that we have access to each of these variables we can now call the service from our sheet service so i can just say this dot service dot that will be create sheets because we're trying to create a new sheet and then we can pass in each of these variables we have here so the name the platform the technology and finally the link and then we can now subscribe to this because it is on an observable so i can just say dot subscribe and then the subscribe what does it return it returns an observable of next as well as an observable of error and an observable of complete but we're gonna return only two observables here which are next and error so i'm gonna type in next and then this listens to the response so i create a response and then using make use of the fat arrow i can just console log the response which probably is not really needed but i can just create a condition that if the response is successful that is if it exists i can just do this dot router dot navigate and the navigate takes in 
a parenthesis and a bracket and you can just probably do for slash list data to list out the data we've created that's for the next which ends here and then the next thing we can do is the error so for the error i can just type in error open a bracket passing the error and make use of the facts arrow for now what we have to do is just to console log the error so with this we can save and then try to see if this works out the way we want for the name i can just type in the name of my youtube channel which is the code angle and then the platform is youtube the technology i teach is web development and then the link to my channel is youtube.com forward slash the code angle and then i can click on submit okay we got an 404 error message which says the connection does not exist so i'm trying to look at my setup right now and i'm not seeing any form of mistakes in the service service is well created the environment file also looks well set up i think I, I i have an idea where this could be coming from this could be the way we set up our google sheets i think under the share button we only gave a permission to be a viewer to anyone who has the link i only has to be a viewer i think we need to set it to an editor and then click on done i think this should allow us to create a new sheet so let's try once more so i'm gonna type in the code angle then platform is gonna be youtube then we have technology which is web dev and then the link is youtube.com for slash the code angle and then i'm gonna click on submit hopefully it works this time and yes it does as you can see we have the objects of the particular inputs we created showing on the console which we re logged as a response on line 38 which you can see right here and we get navigated to our list data components which lists every data which we create and if i check our google docs you can see the data is now showing on the google sheets what we need to do is instead of displaying this static data in our list components we can now make it dynamic i'm going to head to the list data component cs file and within this file i'm going to bring in our service as well as our router so quickly in the constructor i'm going to type in private service and the service is going to be called sheet service we need to bring this in so i import it as well as the angular router so private router of router we bring that in as well and then we need to create a variable above so that holds the data we want to display on the table because this list data component holds a table so i'm going to give it a name of data a type of any and it comes in an array so i'm going to set it as an array and then we need to create a function a function we can just call list data so list data and then open a bracket oh yeah open a bracket right here and then quickly we can now consume the rest api so the rest api we need to consume is called this dot service dot list sheet and then it returns an observable we need to subscribe to so dot subscribe and this is going to be inside of an object and like we did previously it returns an observable of next and arrow for the next we return a response and then make use of the arrow and then we can now console log the response and let's see what we have in the event of any error we can return an observable of error and also console log the error with that done because we want this to show at the initial stage when the page loads so i'm gonna call this particular function inside of the engineer's lifecycle hook and then i can save and then let's head straight to the browser and then we can now check our console as you can see on the console in list data we now have access to the variable which can be seen on line 22 which we are console logging the response so now we can now attach it to our data variable and display it on this particular table we have here instead of 
us showing this static data so to do that quickly i'm just gonna say this dot data is equals to rest that is the response now all we need to do is to loop through this in our list data component so i'm gonna head straight to the table inside of our list data html and within the tr tag this is where i need i'll be making use of the ng4 directory directive <laughs> rather so ng4 is equals to let's because we'll we call the variable data i can just say the singular of data which is datum i can just say let's datum of data and then we need the index because we need to implement delete and edit at this stage so we need the index of each of these particular data on the list that is from 0 1 2 3 depending on that you see where that comes into play but for now i'm just going to say let i is equals to index so that will come in place soon now i need to get rid of the static data so the first one is going to be datum.name the next one is going to be platform and then we have the technology before we finally have the link and we can now save everything we've done so far and then see how it looks on the page as you can see we now have our data showing successfully on the page everything coming from our database in the google sheets can now be reflected in our angular application so what i want to do next we still have two endpoints to consume one of them is the delete and the updates we can start by creating two functions for each of the buttons so inside of the td tag for the edit i can just create a click event this is one of the click and then we need to call this a name we can just give it edit sheet and then pass in the index variable which is i and then we can do the same thing for the delete button as well so i'm just going to copy this and then instead of edit sheet this is going to be delete sheet and then we need to create this inside of our list data components so right under the list data i can just let me grab this edit sheet just create a function edit sheet and then same thing for the delete sheets just grab this create a function called delete sheet and we are good to go with that and each of them have um, expect an index right so i can just pass in the index here as well as here as well and we can give it a type of probably any and this can also have a type of any we can quickly work with the delete sheet in fact and i think that's the easier to work with of the two and to see this in action let me console log the index so index i'm gonna save everything we've done so far so anytime i click on the button i expect a particular index to get locked in the console so if i click on delete you can see we have zero number zero if i create let me click on add to sheet so inside the list data i can just configure this particular navigation by probably putting a button within the nav let's change this a tag to button so this will be a button and then you can give it a class of btm primary and we don't need the href this is an angular application we can just pass in the router link directive instead so the router link is going to be for slash create data so i'm gonna save and let's see if that button works appropriately by routing us to the create data components as you can see it does so let's quickly create another data so here i can just do design course which is one of my favorite youtube channel so it's also on youtube it teaches about design thinking and then youtube.com for slash design course And then i click on submit now you can see we have two entries so if i click on my first entry which is the code angle is zero and design course you can see is one if i create another one it's going to be two so it follows that index and with this we're able to delete a specific index of an entry and also on our database i believe that entry would have been entered
so which means if i refresh the page it will always reflect now to implement the delete we need to call the endpoint for that so quickly we can now call the service by saying this dot service dot delete sheet and then we pass in the index in our parameter and it returns an observable right so we can just subscribe to this and then just like we've done earlier it returns um a next and an error response so i can just say next response within the brackets i can just um call the this dot list data so that the current data will be listed the most recent data will be listed into the ui anytime we delete which we'll see in action once we complete this and then after that we can now set up the error in case of an error so i can just say comma error which is our error observable and then console log the error if there's any form of error which i doubt there will be any and then i can save and let's see if our entry gets deleted successfully so i can start with the code angle youtube channel let me delete my first entry so if i click on delete you can see get deleted and then it updates the the latest entry in the ui by calling the list data function and in the database as well it gets deleted so that functionality now works so the delete is as you can see is pretty much straightforward so for the edits we'll be calling two add points for instance, let me add straight to our sheet service. We'll be calling two endpoints. The first endpoint we'll be calling, or one of the endpoints we'll be calling is get sheet by ID as well as update sheet. So to do that, I'm gonna make use of this function right here to navigate to the edit data component. So I can do this by doing this dot router dot navigate. And then we can now do the name of the route is called we make use of backticks because we are trying to pass in the dynamic index so we can just say for slash edit dash data for slash the id which we call index let me call this id so for consistency because in our routing we named it id so the index of that particular entry would be would it will take us to the index of that particular entry in our url so when i save and then i click on the edits it routes us to that particular route along with its id so when i click on edits you can see the url as for slash zero because that's the first entry and the entry starts from zero so ideally we want to populate these input fields anytime we navigate to this component by default so to do that we we'll need to get the data by id what i can do is just to set up um the necessary imports so i'm gonna head straight to the edit component so inside of the edit component i need to import the form builder the service the router as well as something we call the activated route so let's quickly start with that so i'm gonna say private form builder so we import the form builder and then as well as the router and then up next is the service called sheet service and finally we need the activated routes so i'm gonna say private activated routes then we import the activated routes also coming from angular router i think the form builder didn't get imported for some reasons so we need to import that manually so i can just go right on top and say import form builder which is coming from at angular forms so we are good to go with those imports and once again we need to name our form so i'm going to call this update sheet form and it's going to have an initializer with an exclamation mark and we need to bring in the form group as well so i need to import that so i'm going to copy this form group and inside the at angular route at angular forms i'm gonna paste it right in and then we can now set up our update form inside of our constructor so i can just say this dot update sheet form is equals to this dot form builder just similar to what we did when we we're trying to create a form so the group is gonna be inside of an object and then we have a name 
and then inside of the name we have an array for every field needs to be updated so we need to pass in the validators dot required which also need to import as well validators dot required is also going to be inside of the angular forms i wonder why it's not getting imported it's very strange i can now do this three more times so we have name we have platform oh, not uppercase platform technology as well as the link cool so now i need to, i'll get rid of this void so now we need to work with our activated routes so the activated routes allows us to subscribe to each of the route parameters and then extract the data we need to populate the form so to do this what i need to do is to call the activated route variable we have above by saying this dot activated no yeah activated routes if i'm not wrong let me just grab this dot params oh it's outside of the ng on in it so i was wondering why it was not getting called so this dot activated route dot params dot subscribe because it returns an observable as well so we pass a params variable and then we make use of the fat arrow and we open a bracket so inside of this bracket we can now create a variable above called id so i can just say id and then probably give it a type of number also needs an initializer so it's gonna be a type of number so when i scroll down into the engine in it i can now say this dot id is equals to params i'll make use of the brackets notation to extract the id so if i console log the id this dot id and then save when the page loads and we check the console on page on line 32 we can see we are able to get the id for that particular entry which is zero as you can see from the route we are, we are able to subscribe to the id showing inside of this route parameter and then log it into the console that is we now have access to it and we can pass that particular id to our get sheet data by id service so that's what we want to do next so to do the get sheet data by id service i need to do this dot service dot get sheet data by id and then it's gonna take in the this dot id and then we need to subscribe to it and in the process we return the response probably might have some errors so we'll give it a type of any make use of the fat arrow and then down below we can now probably console log our response so console.log the response and then we save so on line 35 let's see how this looks like so as you can see it returns an array we need to just access just the first item inside of the array so i can just make use of the bracket notation once more and then because we are trying to deal with one item at it at a go it returns it in an object format instead of an array format this is how we want it to come as so that is cool now we can now pass this response to a particular variable so let me just create that as above as well and we can call that data so i can just say data make use of the initializer and then probably give it a type of any and then we scroll down so i can just say this dot data is equals to the response we got from a subscription that is our sheet data by id service so now we can now pass this so we can now get each of these values and then set them into the form so what do i mean by this so i can do something like this by accessing the name of our form which is update sheet form which we created above as you can see right here update sheet form so we want to pre-populate the form instead of it being empty like this because we are trying to access data we get got earlier and update it so now we can now do this dot update sheet form dot get and the get allows us to assess the name of each specific field so i'm just going to pass in an optional chain in and then set the value to the results of the data coming from the api by doing this dot data so this allows us to get the name for that particular object and pre-populate it inside of the input field so we can do the same for the rest of the 
fields so instead of name the next thing we want to do it for his platform then the next one okay made a mistake there platform then the next one is technology and finally we have the link so with that we sh this should work but let's not forget we need to also set in a form control name so quickly in each of the fields for instance the name as is, needs to have its own form control name as well as the platform and the like so quickly for the name i just want to say form control name pass the name so let me copy this and paste it inside of the platform input field and call that platform quickly we head straight to the technology passing the technology and finally the link just passing the link and then i think that's all we need to do input type of submit is not necessary here so i'm just gonna save everything we've done so far and then let's see if each of the input fields gets pre-filled okay we have an error somewhere oh our form itself we didn't pass in the form group so we have a form group which takes in the name of the form which i believe is update form update sheet form rather so i'm just gonna copy this pass in the update sheet form as well as the function we need when we want to update so i can just do that here as well so i can just pass in on submit this allows us to update the form so inside of our ts file we can just create this because that will be what we want to do next um, try to update the form by calling that particular api endpoint so let's save this time around and i believe it should be error free presto as you can see we now have the name of the course the youtube <laughs> the platform name the technology name as well as the link so anytime we want to update we can just edit each of these field and then update them because we passed in the validators to be required we can also inside of jcml pass in a disabled form attribute so if the form is not valid the button will be disabled so to do that i'm just gonna pass in disabled and then i can say so this sheet form dot if it's invalid then the disabled attributes gets caught or if the update sheet form is pristine then the form is invalid so you can see this in action so as you can see the button is faded even when we focus on each of the input field it's not valid it's only valid when we try to edit we are now able to call the update endpoints as you can see so that's how we want it to work so quickly which is the final thing we want to do is to consume the updates endpoints so for us to be able to update a particular um entry so to do that i need to extract the values from the update sheet form just like we did when we we're doing the create so i need to come over to the create and then i'll grab everything inside of here because what we are trying to do is similar only the name of the form is different so instead of google sheets form we're gonna have update sheets form we now have access to the name so if you are not sure what i'm doing if i console log this dot form update sheets form dot value and i click on submit you see that all the values get logged into the console as you can see all the values get logged into the console so this is what we want to pass to our service our update service so to do that i'm just going to say this dot service dot update sheet that's the name of our service the service expects um, the id as well as the name platform technology and link so let me confirm if we set that up properly in our update sheet okay we, it needs an id actually we didn't do that so the id is going to be above the name so it's going to be a type of number and it's going to be after the connection url so i'm going to do forward slash id as you can see so that's a mistake we made and clearly we are able to um, get hold of that so because it also takes in a route parameter so that's why we have to do it that way so inside of the edit data so we need to call the first thing we need to call is our id so i'd say this is id then we can now pass in the name the platform so i, I say name platform technology and link so we can now subscribe to it and then 
deal with the observable citrons so which are next as well as error so next it's going to return a response so response using the fat arrow i do not want to console the response i can just set a condition that if the response is successful that is if it exists navigate us to this dot router dot navigate navigate us to the list data components so that we'll see what we just updated so i'm just going to say four slash lists dash data so that's all and then we now configure the error so under it we say error and then we can just console log the error which is all we need to do and with that i can just head straight to the page and then let's try out what we just did so i'm just gonna change design course to gary simon which is the name of the owner of that um youtube channel so gary simon and then click on update as you can see the name has been updated to gary simon the platform the technology and the link everything remains the same so the crowd functionality now works like perfectly and successfully so we can try this again by creating a data and then deleting it and editing and updating so quickly i'm just going to type in probably the code angle once more the code angle platform youtube technology web dev and the link youtube.com forward slash the code angle and then i click on submit and then you can see that entry gets entered i can now edit this probably i don't want web dev i want web development and then i can just i didn't spell that properly i can just um click on update as you can see web development gets updated and everything we do keeps reflecting in our database so probably i don't want the code angle to be in this entry anymore i can just click on delete and then it gets deleted from the entry and it's deleted from the database as well and so that's all this tutorial is all about the sheet.best keeps track of every request you make for instance for the free plan you are only allowed to make 100 requests per month if you want more requests you need to upgrade your plan so they help us to kind of um, carry the heavy load of directly implementing the google sheets api itself so i think it's a good platform and um, it can help you do um some basic things and help you understand how api works and things like that so that's why i decided to show you how to use this platform to create a crud application that can be connected to the google sheets to create a crud application so that's it for this tutorial if you are new to this channel make sure you like as well as subscribe as well as share to your friends who are learning web development i really appreciate that so thank you very much for watching and i will see you again in the next one